Uh, hi everyone. I see a couple of you have joined. Uh, thank you for joining. Um, actually, waiting for uh, one of my other panel members to join as well. Uh, we wanted to basically have a discussion on what you see up on the slide here, which is uh, you know how you can uh, decide the responsibilities between where API management uh, is responsible for versus. A service mesh or you know an application integration uh, now we are seeing uh, a lot of overlap between these three areas uh, and uh, a lot of vendors are now uh, coming up with products that span uh, multiple of those responsibilities so yeah this is going to be an interesting talk and if you have any questions or if you want to take part in the discussion, please uh, uh, please uh, try to share uh, and or leave your questions uh, in the chat, and uh, you know we will take up those points of discussion as well. Hi, Luca. Welcome. I think you're on mute. I can't hear you. No, still can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Loud and clear. Okay. Yes. Great. OK, let's get started. We have, I think, six people watching us. So hi, everyone. Uh, glad you could join us. Um, so our talk is going to focus on API management, so the evolution of API management over the last uh, five to six years when we started out with uh, individual services, uh, maybe having tens of services to now having uh, you know thousands of services that you need to manage, right? And the growth of service mesh. So Luca is our expert uh, on the field. He's uh, a consultant implementing APIs uh, day in and day out. So uh, uh, we have invited him here to the panel uh, to discuss this. Uh, Luca, uh, do you want to share uh, your experience on uh, how you are seeing uh, customers implement uh, service mesh and API integration together? Do you have any use cases you can share? Uh, yeah, I've, <clears throat> so in the last, I would say, uh, six to nine months, I've had some uh, interesting conversation with uh, some of our customers. Um, and I think the uh, the use case was more or less always the same. So basically some 
customer was interested into using microservices um, and they were starting their journey from uh, uh, most of the time monolith or uh, some other technology similar to EAP, for example, or WebSphere, and uh, they were starting the, their journey towards <clears throat> making this architecture more scalable, uh, you know, uh, modularizing everything. And uh, of course, they started to think um, about how would we control this, uh, because it can mm, turn out to be a mess very soon. Mm -hmm. And uh, so there was, as part of uh, their, I just say, engagement or workshop, they were also interested into exposing some of uh, this uh, modularized functionality outside. Mm -hmm. So of course, they were explicitly asking for API management capabilities. So it was pretty evident, uh, but at the same time, they uh, they thought that maybe they could use uh, for all these problems uh, just API Gateway, okay. and uh, that wasn't really the case because a lot of times um, when you're dealing with microservices, you're dealing with this uh, mesh of uh, services. Uh, you're just interested into controlling the relationship between them. Yeah. And you have really no interest into uh, having or tracking end user of yeah. these yeah. services or, you know, yeah. having any business visibility on this. It's yeah. just a yeah. technical layer uh, yeah. that you want to add to control them. Yeah. Yeah. So basically what <clears throat> what happened was, uh, of course, it was not um, a lucky uh lucky coincidence we were also releasing our integration layer between uh, istio basically and our api management solution so this is based on a mixer component for istio uh, and this is where it actually strike the, the right balance so um you might uh, well you want to add uh, both functionalities in those cases so yeah. Uh, so that you can have uh, the Istio control capabilities while still keeping the business control inside yeah. API management. Yeah. And then for all these, uh, let's just say, uh, border microservices that are actually exposing business functionality outside the company or even inside, but uh, more publicly, I just say, yeah then you might just want uh, to use an API gateway. Uh, okay. So, yeah, yeah this is, yeah. I think, the, the most common use case we've seen around this. Yeah, yeah. yeah really good yeah, point really you made. Right. You, know, you know, when companies, when companies decide, uh, decide to go for uh, uh, microservice uh, architecture, you know, breaking up the monolith and trying to get that microservice architecture going, uh, they need to first realize what are the you know technical responsibilities they want and what are the business responsibilities they're trying to uncover uh, through an API management, right? So just an API gateway, API gateway will provide you that ability to interact with uh, your consumers as also having a proper API management platform like Threescale providing you with that you know, formal API contracts, documentation, developer portal, you know, partner ecosystem. You know, you need to know who your targeted users are going to be, for whom you are going to be exposing your services. And then, uh, you know, you have got to also decide that internally, if you are going to have these uh, proliferation of microservices, you would need to have that uh, observability built in uh, that uh, uh, you ability to do uh, network mutual TLS or uh, uh, you know the rate limiting built in within your mesh itself to handle uh, the you know the communication between your various uh, microservices that build up your architecture so having both is important but uh, it's important to remember that they target different 
users. Uh, so the service mesh is more uh, targeted towards your developers and DevOps engineers making their life easier. Whereas API management is for you to provide that uh, ability to reach out to an external ecosystem, to a business ecosystem and expose your services to be discoverable by a community or uh, you know by your business users build a business out of your apis uh, uh, look i wanted to also uh, you know take up uh, another aspect that you're seeing some of the overlap here that we are seeing uh, you know in terms of uh, rate limiting in terms of security mm -hmm. do you see any patterns which are different between how we deal with it in api management and how we deal with it in a service mesh well yeah i was actually gonna speak about this so <clears throat> i think the the best uh, so as you were saying there's big overlap actually i would say with the recent the most recent releases from uh, three scale or our api management solution i think <clears throat> we can map uh, one to one uh, with service mesh policies i don't think we're missing any um so at the end of the day um if you have to decide uh when to apply one uh or the other in terms of api gateway or envoy mm -hmm. i would say uh, the difference here is um if you're trying to treat a problem which has a massive scale and you want to apply uh, general rules in a massive way or you have <clears throat> targeted, uh, let's just say, services and targeted audience uh, that you want to address. Uh, and in this case, you might want to apply the gateway, the API gateway. That's that's not to say that you cannot do automation with API gateway. It's just that with service mesh, um, let's just say that the, you basically write the rule once Mm -hmm. uh, in a very detailed way, and then you applied it massively uh, with all the uh, services that might join the service mesh. Plus, you have the added uh, benefit uh, that you have um, the, um, how do you call it, uh, the auto injection of the envoy. So basically, any new service that join the mesh by default can can join the the istio control uh, and can be automatically for example excluded or included in a set of uh, policy so that's also another important element when for example you're thinking about a dynamic set of uh, microservices that are being developed and deprecated uh, on a frequent base i just say yeah great so uh, i have a really good question from Marjuka, uh you know in the chat uh so the question is basically about do you see service mesh being enough in internal integration use in complex network environments with multiple evolution of apis so how do you see network firewall proxy management and access management in these use cases so i think uh, without veering a lot towards uh, how service mesh tries to address these issues right so if you just want to keep our uh, discussion limited to uh, how uh, uh, the overlap between a service mesh and api management works uh, so in terms of uh, you know providing responsibility uh, network related uh, traffic issues network related security issues network related uh, uh, you know policies are something that uh, a service mesh is best handled to cover and the service mesh is best equipped to manage that uh, whereas access management when you talk about access management or proxy management right uh, providing that reverse proxy gateway to your end users providing that access uh, management using uh, maybe OAuth 2 and OpenID Connect or providing that uh, user keys to uh, uh, and policies to access certain uh, methods or certain uh, applications. That is something that you would uh, uh, leave to the, an API management platform and a gateway to handle because uh, it has got the right mix of plans and policies and uh, 
uh, rate limiting and uh, security to handle that. So with three scale, what we have also done is uh, we have a mixer adapter. So with the uh, with the adapter, what you can do is you would plug in a, a three scale adapter into the uh, control plane of a service mesh and it would enforce policies that you configure within your three scale directly into a service mesh so you could essentially plug in an api management platform to your service mesh to expose the services and the apis that you need uh, and uh, uh, you know enforce security policies at the access control level rather than at the network level so uh, look i want to add to that uh yeah i Mm, I was uh, listening to an interesting uh, session recently internal to Reddit around uh, zero trust security. Um, and basically, uh, you might want to <clears throat> add security uh, as always as uh, layers of onion. So every single thing that uh, Mariuka is mentioning adds some uh, distinctive uh, functionality in terms of protection um, and you might want to you know uh, configure them all together uh, so that you provide additional security um, so for example uh, there are some overlapping functionality clearly but uh, you would start with a standard network protection with a standard firewall then uh, add it up uh, WAF if you want to protect the application layer and then add the actually the Istio uh, level with uh, the optional usage of Envoy filters or something like open policy agent to actually do some logic around the application layer when uh, when filtering services calls and then as you were saying Satya um, there's all the part around uh, actual access management and authorization, uh, which, uh, so basically you define some general rule in this uh, service mesh layer, and then you define the specific business rule in the access management with API management. Of course, we should not forget about IDP. So we have a uh, good integration in general with any OIDC is so open ID connect compatible IDP and inside uh, with that integration you can manage both the access part and also the authorization part through uh, roles uh, claims and uh, uh, most recent standard around authorization with open ID connect yeah, that that's a good point. Yeah, the, the plugin with uh, ID, ID providers and the uh, support for protocols like OAuth2 and OpenID Connect is what your API management platform gives you to be able to scale out your uh, authentication and authorization policies uh, a lot outside your network and outside your mesh itself. So yeah, that is a really good point. Um, so, uh, we are uh, we have another four minutes to go. Uh, and, uh, you know, so our, our, in terms of, uh, you know, what we have discussed and uh, the slide that we have put up in terms of responsibilities for uh, the different, uh, uh, you know, different uh, products, uh, any uh, any thoughts on that? Anyone want to pitch in uh, if, uh, if you think this makes sense, the targeted users and the use cases, do they make sense to you? Great. Uh, thanks, Marjuka, for uh, uh, reinforcing. Yeah, I, it's good to see that, you know, uh, various vendors, irrespective of whether they're coming from a, a service mesh uh, background, coming from an API management platform, or uh, coming from an application integration platform, or even identity and access management platform, we are all uh, uh, emerging towards, uh, you know, this uh, sort of the management capabilities roadmap. And uh, it's not just Red Hat's vision, but you know, talking to uh, other people here in API days, listening to other uh, other uh, vendors, it just reinforces the point that uh, you know we we are 
uh, all uh, the industry is thinking alike in terms of uh, you know the uh, responsibilities and uh, the evolution of uh, where api management should go in a in an increasingly microservices world look any closing thoughts on that um well i think we will see in the future an interesting evolution of the API gateway. So uh, speaking from internal discussion within our API management team, um, <clears throat> there's a lot of interest focus on uh, Envoy mm -hmm. as possible uh, gateway evolution mm -hmm. or other uh, gateway in general that are well uh, adapt to serverless uh, so mm -hmm. they scale very well. So I think that's one point where uh, maybe the <clears throat> these two sets, so the service mesh set and the API management set will converge uh, and will use instead of just two different gateways, one single gateway. Absolutely, absolutely. And the uh, three scale uh, policy, policy adapter that is already available with three scale fits into that so it will be interesting to see how it evolves uh, you know with the release of uh, you know the next version of istio uh, and you know the evolution of the architecture uh, so before we go i know we are nearly out of time i just want to plug in a couple of uh, other sessions that we are doing as part of red hat here uh, so there is a workshop starting in about 30 minutes uh, on exactly this topic that we talked about how to manage uh, you know api uh, apis uh, as microservices so i do a, a short presentation and a demo on uh, how you can uh, use uh, the three scale mixer adapter to plug in api management capabilities uh, into your service mesh so i would suggest you check it out uh, i will also be available uh, on the workshop to answer questions and then tomorrow we have a talk coming up from uh, uh, Mark Cheshire, our product director for API management, uh, he is going to uh, lay out the roadmap and vision of Red Hat in terms of uh, where he sees uh, API management going. Uh, you know, in an increasingly service mesh world. So, yeah, those are the two uh, uh, two uh, talks that are coming up. Uh, we are also available in this uh, in the expo section in the virtual booth. And we have some resources available. We have uh, a, a free sign up to our uh, three scale SaaS platform. If you want to explore our platform, uh, please uh, visit us at the booth as well. We, we usually have uh, one of us in rotation available there to answer questions. Okay, okay we are out of time. Thank you very much, everyone, for attending. And I uh, hope you found it useful. Uh, thank you, Luca, for uh, coming and providing your insights uh, in the roundtable. Thank you, Satya. Thank you.